The smallest capacity in the Pac-12, just 33,000, but it is going to be loud tonight at Martin Stadium. Robert Taylor back to return for Washington State. USC won the toss and deferred to the second half. Chase McGrath, the freshman walk-on, will get us going. Who's ready for some Pac-12 after dark with some unbeatens out west? Taylor will bring it out. Robert Taylor chopped out shy of the 20-yard line. Matt Lopes, good special teams tackle for USC. Luke Falk came to Washington State as an unheralded walk-on. He made his Pac-12 debut three years ago against USC in a Trojan victory. Look at him now. He's closing in on the all-time Pac-12 touchdown record. It's been unbelievably productive inside this offense. A cerebral quarterback that understands Every in and out gets him into the right place. And he can throw the football around the yard a little bit too. Nation's leader in completion percentage at 77%. Quick throw underneath. And the catch is made by Kyle Sweet, junior out of California. For Washington State, this is a really strong offense, but the running backs are heavily involved. Throw to these running backs so much. 59 catches for these running backs. They don't run the football much or effectively. They use throwing to the backs as an extension of the run. And man, Luke Falk does a lot of great things, but once you get him on the move, uncomfortable outside the pocket, that's when he can struggle. Isaiah Johnson Mack makes the grab, and he's got a first down. As we'd expect from this air raid offense, quick passes get Luke Falk in a rhythm here early to start. Jamal Morrow, the Southern California native, with a big run of 30 yards. Big hole opens up off the right side. B.J. Salmonson gets a nice block on Rasheem Green. And big gain on first down for the Cougars on the ground. Don't let the rush numbers fool you. These are really talented backs. They do a lot of this. Morrow out of the backfield with another first down. Chase down by John Houston. This is exactly what we talked about. This is how they get these running backs involved. They're going to make this defense run, stretch the field, get the ball to the backs however they can out in space and make the defenders miss. Uh, James Williams has checked in next to Luke Falk. Five-man rush for USC. Falk got rid of it quickly, and he finds Isaiah Johnson Mack in front of Iman Marshall. Picks up five on first down. The defensive coordinator Clancy Pendergast decides to bring some pressure. It's man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. And Amon Marshall giving a lot of cushion outside for an easy pitch and catch for Washington State. You mentioned it, Dusty. A lot of short throws, early rhythm for the redshirt senior. Ball. We see this a lot. Rasheem Green picks up the sack. This is when Luke Falk gets into a little bit of trouble. 
He goes through his reads. He never wants to force the football. He never wants to try to fit it into a tight window where it doesn't belong. But with that, he spends a lot of time in the pocket, and this is exactly what happens. Excellent job by the defensive line collapsing the pocket. Luke Falk has nowhere to go with the football. A nice coverage sack by the Trojans. Ochenna Nuosu and Rasheem Green, really good edge guys, team up for the sack to force third and ten. Falk out of the pocket. Throws towards the end zone and nearly caught by Jameer Calvin. It's not Luke Falk's game, but he put up a good one on the move. Typically, you get Luke Falk outside the pocket, that's where he struggles. Rush gets there. Luke Falk gets outside. And he finds an open target down the field. And Jameer Calvin, and Calvin can't come down with the catch. Oh, man, that's a great throw by Luke Falk. The receiver's got to pay him off. So Eric Powell... Five of six on the season will try from 44. A left footer. And he connects to get Washington State on the board first. The Cougars on top to start the night. And USC and their outstanding quarterback, Sam Darnold, will take the field when you come back to Pac-12 after dark. Back at Pullman, Washington, as you're watching the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Opening series field goal for Washington State to take the lead at home. They've lost nine of the last ten against USC. Looking for their first win at home against the Trojans since 2002. Bayless Jones, Stephen Carr back to return. With Eric Powell kicking them away for Washington State. Well, Sam Darnold, we know a lot about him. More people know plenty about him now. But a lot of folks now are starting to hope and wish <laughs> maybe some Jet fans out there that they might have the number one overall pick. And for more on Sam, we go down to Polly McGrath. Well, Adam, Sam Darnold has high expectations himself, and he tells me he's not happy with his performance lately, saying, I know I can be better. He admitted he's been struggling with his confidence lately, and it's led to some poor decision-making and forced throws. He said before this first drive, he's going to pause, take a deep breath, and try to calm himself down. Adam. 20 years of age, Molly, mature beyond his years. On first down, he finds Tyler Vaughns. Vaughns getting past Darian Moulton for a big gain on first down. 16 on the opening USC play. Redshirt sophomore out of Capistrano Beach, California. Darnold rockets one and it's incomplete for Deontay Burnett. That'll bring up second down and ten. The question for USC, are they battle tested or battle scarred? Four physically tough football games they've had to start the season. Now they won all of those, but they come in here limping a little bit with some guys nicked up, beat up, and not even being able to play tonight. How about the son of Zeus is loose? Watch out for number 50 in the middle, Hercules Mata'afa. Maybe the quickest first step in all of college football. No kidding, man. He's undersized, but very fast. Darnold gets it out quickly. And close to midfield is Deontay Burnett. One of those players that has been dealing with injury. He's landed hard on his left shoulder each of the last two games against Texas and Cal. Missed some practice time this week, but he's good to go tonight. He's a playmaker, a gamer. You knew he was going to show up for this game this evening. Without question, Sam Darnold's go-to guy in this offense. 100 catches now for the junior out of Compton, California. First down for Ronald Jones. He didn't play last week at Cal. Sprained ankle, thigh contusion, but he's back and rearing to go tonight. 
play right there, a perfect example of the trust offensive coordinator T. Martin has for Sam Darnold. He checked at the line of scrimmage based off the numbers and got them into the right run to pick up the first down. We'll see a lot of this. Darnold rolling out of the pocket, and Burnett is out of bounds near the 38-yard line in front of Jalen Thompson. Sam Darnold does just about everything right. I mean, this is an elite combination of size, athleticism, and arm strength. But as you mentioned, outside the pocket as he's rolling, being able to find receivers and fire accurate passes is where he really excels. Another quick toss. It's Burnett trying to muscle his way to the sticks. And the spot looks to be right at the 34-yard line, which is the line to gain. Burnett loses his helmet. He'll have to come off the field for a play. Talk to me a little bit more about Sam Darnold. What do you see when you see him on tape? I see a lot of good stuff, man. This is a baller. He's got the it factor, though. When his team needs a play, he's always the one that comes up with it. If they get good pressure, he gets flushed outside the pocket. You think it's an no play, he makes a play. And then the triple-A, arm strength, athleticism, and accuracy. He's got every one of them. What a cut by Jones. Ronald Jones inside the 15 for USC. Looks like a guy who has some fresh legs right now. This last week getting his thigh bruise right. Excellent job on the right side by Chuma Udoga. Open up a nice hole and a good cut by Ronald Jones. Right back to him and there is Daniel Iquale. The biggest guy up front for a relatively small defensive line. The only 300-pound defensive lineman in the two deep for Alex Grinch in this defense. He said, when you're at Washington State, you got to compromise something. You can't have everything. They have compromised size so they can put speed, athleticism on, this t on the defense. He's one of the great young defensive coordinators in college football, Alex Grinch. Darnold, pressure. Sam Darnold making some magic happen. Working inside the five-yard line. Boy, Jahad Woods had him dead to rights, and Darnold made him pay. Remember when I said the it factor? I mean, Sam Darnold's under pressure. They bring a blitz. Jahad Woods gets clean, doesn't panic, gets outside. It's a nice pickup with nothing there. Darnold keeps. Darnold scores. Whatever that it factor is, it was on display on that opening USC drive. His athleticism just off the charts. We talk so much about his ability to throw the football accurately, the big arm, but you can't sleep on his ability to run with the football. Excellent job in the zone read, makes the proper read, and walks into the end zone. Chase McGrath, the true freshman out of Newport Beach, California. And USC takes the 7-3 lead nearly halfway through the first. A lot of people think he might be the number one overall pick in the upcoming NFL draft. We know about the arm showing off the athleticism as the Trojans on top early at Pullman. The French word palouse means land with thick and short grass. That's very fitting for the fertile hills and valleys here in the Palouse region, which encompasses parts of Idaho and Washington and Oregon. So, with all that fertile ground, they grow a lot of wheat, grow a lot of beans. This is the lentil capital, Pullman, Washington. And tonight, it feels like the college football capital of the universe. Bernard Bell back to return a Chase McGrath kick. Bell from the one yard line. And he'll get hit shy of the 25. For the first time, we check in with my man Adnan Burke.
<laughs> well played, Adnan Burke. Luke Falk starts this drive for the 23-yard line. Screen pass for Morrow. Good open field tackle made on the perimeter by Ajene Harris. Well, three matchups of ranked teams in college football this weekend. This is one. How about tomorrow night? Game days in Blacksburg for Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo on ABC and the ESPN app. Second-ranked Clemson, 12th-ranked Virginia Tech rematch of the ACC title game. The carry for James Williams on second down. I'm interested to see Kelly Bryant go into that tough atmosphere tomorrow night for the Clemson Tigers. No question. Bud Foster's definitely going to have something up his sleeve. Loves to bring pressure, try to rattle, rattle the cage. Kelly Bryant, but how about Josh Jackson on the other side? Yeah. He's been lighting it up over 315 yards a game. Total offense, 12 touchdowns, only one turnover, but that defensive front Ooh. for Clemson, it's nasty. Arguably the best in the country. It's going to be a fun matchup tomorrow night in Blacksburg with Chris, Kirk, and Maria on the call. I love when game day's in Blacksburg. It's such a great place. Not much there for Williams. He was never down, though. Second effort, no knee on the ground, and he's got the first down to the 35. Second effort, that's exactly what that was about. Refusing to go down, refusing to be stopped short on third down, just keeps the leg drive. It's on top of a USC defensive player. And they're going to review this play to see if Williams ever went down. John Houston tried to undercut him. And the Pac-12 booth will get a chance to look at this again. Ooh, very close. It was almost on the helmet of Rasheem Green. I don't think the knee touched. It went towards the ground. No, it uh, never touches the I ground. I don't think it did either. It's a great job by him to put his hand on the ground, keep his balance, and continue to drive forward to pick up enough for the first down. That's all 1-2 and willpower. It was nothing there. Excellent job by the USC front. Stuff in the middle of the line. After review, the ruling on the field, the runner was not down. Prior to gaining the first down, is confirmed. Steven Stribling leads our Pac-12 crew tonight. First down, Washington State. Great job by our crew here. The knee never touched the ground. The redshirt sophomore from Burbank, California, moves the chains for Washington State. Falk escapes the pocket and will get a positive gain out of it. Adam, some would call Luke Falk an underrated quarterback, but he gets some attention from NFL scouts, usually between four and eight here per game. There are 22 here tonight. One scout told me they're here for both of the quarterbacks, and a couple NFL GMs have even been credentialed, so that makes this big game feel even bigger, and these players are trying to show off for some people here tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it, Miles. 22 scouts, a lot of NFL talent. Falk, NFL-type throw, but... Incomplete. Looking for C.J. Dimery. Good coverage by Jack Jones. I thought it was a great compliment when we spoke with USC defensive coordinator Clancy Pendergast. And he straight up said, Luke Fox, an NFL quarterback. Yeah. Spent a lot of time in the NFL, and he said he's got all the things you look for for a prototypical NFL pocket passer. It's an impressive journey that Luke Falk has been on to go from unheralded walk-on to one of the great quarterbacks in a program that has had a lot of great quarterbacks at Washington State. Third and nine. USC bringing a blitz. Over the middle, and it's dropped by Tavares Martin, Jr. Fourth down. That's the second time now that Washington State's receivers have really let Luke Falk down. Second drop already. It's an excellent job by Luke Falk, though. Stepping up in the pocket, finding Tavares Martin on a dig across the middle. But a sure-handed receiver, the best playmaker of this wide receiver core, with a tough drop, results in a punt. Both drops on third down, like you said, Dusty. One in the end zone, and one there would have extended this drive. 
Short punt, decent bounce inside the 25 yard line. We talked about Washington State's defensive line. They're not the beefiest guys, let's just call it that, but they are fast. And this dude, named after the son of Zeus, Hercules Mata'apa, we'll tell you about his speed when you come back to Pullman. When you pop the Washington State defensive film in, Hercules Mata'afa jumps off the screen. Lightning quick first step. Takes him no time to get in the backfield and create disruption. Quarterbacks literally have no chance. I'm talking under two seconds. Look at the first step. Look at the quickness. The violent hands. He's slippery. Can contort his body. One of the most disruptive forces in the Pac-12 this season. And Adam, they're going to need that kind of disruption today to slow down this man, Sam Darnold, in his offense. Starting this drive from the 23. Toss play, Stephen Carr. Short gain, tackled by Sean Harper. Big storyline tonight for USC. As Isaac Dotson is slow to get up after the play. Is the left tackle position. The opening drive belonged to Clayton Johnston. Redshirt sophomore making his first career start. Austin Jackson is the true freshman you see. A skin infection prevented Toa Lobendon from making the trip to Pullman. So you have to make up 25 starts with a couple of guys that have never started a game at the collegiate level. I can tell you based off the opening drive, Clayton Johnson didn't look like he was making his first start. Very solid in the opening drive. And we're going to look now at the true freshman, Austin Jackson, as he gets his turn. This is big for Washington State now because Isaac Dotson is playing middle linebacker for the injured Peyton Pelour, who saw his college career come to an end with a broken foot against Oregon State. So now things get a little tighter on the defensive end for Wazoo. Vaughn's in space. Vaughn's breaking tackles out near midfield. T. Martin told us on the call earlier in the week that he felt like Tyler Vaughn is about ready to break out. He's got great size at six foot two, 185, and he continues to get better and better each and every week. Darnold with time and incomplete. We're looking for Michael Pittman taking a shot near midfield on first down. Jalen Thompson creeping over the top. Star-studded safety for Washington State. Yep. Alex Grinch just ood nod over Jalen Thompson. Excellent job getting over the top of the route and helping the incompletion. Blockers in front of Carr. Trying to find the alley and Mata Appa, one of the guys, along with Jahad Woods to chase him down. Third down. It's a big down for the Washington State defense. You know, Alex Grinch in these situations, very prone to bringing pressure. He likes to get the football out quick, but when you bring pressure on most quarterbacks, it's successful. When you bring pressure on Sam Darnold, it can get scary, because that's a lot of times when he's at his best. Just a three-man rush. Tight window, incomplete for Vaughns. Good coverage by Marcus Strong. And Washington State will force a USC punt. Alex Grinch goes against the grain, against what he's accustomed to, mixing it up a little bit. Typically brings pressure, but as we've seen, a lot of teams scared to bring pressure on Sam Darnold. Just plays a drop eight, good coverage, gets the defense off the field. Robert Taylor is back to return along with Jamal Morrow. Reed Budrovich, fourth year walk on in his first action in this 2017 season, these last five games. Good punt. And that will pin Washington State deep with 342 to play.
Luke Falk made his Pac-12 debut three years ago, the last time these two teams met. November of 2014, he had to come into the game when Connor Halliday got knocked out of the game in the first quarter. And in his first real action against a big-time opponent, he threw the ball 57 times. They trust this guy wholeheartedly, and he's developed it even deeper with Mike Leach over the last several years. Tavares Martin Jr. in space. Marvell Tell with the stop. Let's dive into Luke Falk a little bit further, Dust. Well, it starts with upstairs, between the shoulders. Very cerebral, as you mentioned, fully understands this offense. They give him complete control. He's got excellent touch. He doesn't have that big Sam Darnold arm, but, man, he puts the ball in the money with great touch. Likes to throw the football from the pocket. We've seen him once tonight get outside and make a good throw, but typically he likes to be right there comfortable from within the pocket. I think Falk believed he had a free play. I'm under the impression that he believed it should have been an offsides call. That's why he just took a shot down the field. Ends up being a wasted down with no call. Third and six down. Yeah, that looked like John Houston may have been in the neutral zone. And Luke Falk certainly thought so. Otherwise, he wouldn't have just tossed it up there on a free play. He moved, but I'm not sure that he crossed the line of scrimmage. So. Yep. And clearly the officials agree with you, Dust. Must not have. Blitz. Falk. In trouble, and down he goes for the second time tonight. This time it's Josh Fatu with the sack. Excellent coverage down the field. As you mentioned, they bring some pressure, but good coverage. And the blitz gets home. How about Fatu in the middle? Working those hands, continuing to work and climb. Nice sack and a good pressure by the USC defense. Chris Watkins, the blitzer from the safety spot with the initial pressure, and Fatu able to get the sack. Some of the sacks are because of Luke Falk's ability to keep reading progressions and not wanting to force it. Sometimes it's the offensive line. Rugby-style punt from Kyle Sweet. Made contact near the 40-yard line. Who's got it? This is a crucial call. It looked like a Jane A. Harris was able to dive on top of it for USC. Boy, that could have been disastrous for the Trojans. Instead, they'll have the ball in plus territory. Isaiah Langley is 24. Perhaps some contact made there, and a Jane A. Harris was able to beat. Kyle Selly, the long snapper, to the football. you got to give a J.N. A. Harris a lot of credit. It gets dirty down there on the bottom of the scrum for getting the football, and especially in a game of this magnitude. And the nickelback finds a way to bring the ball in and get his offense the ball back. Fighting, scratching, clawing. A lot of bad stuff happens down there <laughs> getting, looking for the football. I feel like you've had some experience with that at some point. Dust, flea flicker. Darnold. Pressure launches it and gets it past the line of scrimmage. No grounding penalty initially, but now a penalty marker is thrown. And Chuma Adogu is down. The quarterback had handed the ball off. He had given up possession. He is not eligible to legally ground the ball. Intentional grounding. Number 14 of the offense. Ball replaced with the spot of the ball. That's a very important distinction, and that's a great job by Steven Strimling to explain that. Once you give up possession of the ball, you're no longer allowed to ground the ball legally. So on flea flickers, it doesn't matter if you're out of the pocket or not. That is an intentional grounding penalty because there's no eligible receiver in the area. Well done by this officiating crew making that distinction on that play. And now a major concern for USC is Chuma Adoga. Already, USC is short in offensive tackle in Toa Lobendon tonight. And now their starting right tackle is down. On the first penalty marker on either side tonight. Junior out of Atlanta in some pain. Watch him here. 70 on the left side of your screen. Mataafa. Yeah. He's chasing down Sam Darnold. He's the one that 
created the pressure, the initial pressure that got Sam Darnold to roll outside the pocket. And as you mentioned, just rolls up on the leg of the big offensive tackle. And, man, potentially now two starters on this offensive line for USC, both tackles. The guys who are protecting Sam Darnold's backside and front side, at least for right now, neither on the field. So it's going to be Andrew Voorhees, a true freshman out of Kingsburg, California, and Clayton Johnston at right and left tackle here. Voorhees played quite a bit against Texas. He had some struggles, physical run blocker, but in the past game, Carr, not much there. Derek Moore there for the stop for Washington State. Derek Moore is making a start tonight as well. Namdi Okwayu, the typical starting defensive end, is not available tonight with an injury. And they like Derek Moore. Young guy, played last year as a true freshman, physical. And as you saw there, got good speed off the football. He's got a lot of room to try to cover, and he will not make it. Chased down by Jihad Woods. And after giving up pretty good field position, Washington State's defense is able to do the job again. Excellent pressure on the inside. The big nose tacker, tackle of Quale. Just wins with a rip. Gets up the field. Arm over, rip it up. Gets Sam Darnold uncomfortable. And gets him scrambling. A nice open field tackle by Jihad Woods. Gets the defense off the field once again. Budrovich gets rid of it with pressure coming. Fair catch at the 11 by Taylor. This is a big time game, big time atmosphere tonight. Very crucial game, Molly. That's right, Adam. You can feel the energy here from these teams right off the bus. USC was rocking side to side. Clay Helton said he loved that. Players were laughing, having fun, letting their hair down a little <laughs> bit, showing off some dance moves. It is definitely getting loose here in the Palouse, and it's really loud down here on the sideline. Yeah, it feels like it, Ma. Ball, deep shot, open man, it is caught by Bell! Inside the 30. It's a, it's a breakdown in coverage. They let Renard Bell loose. A Jane Harris, the nickel, had him in man-to-man -man coverage and just let him run right by. And a nice touch pass by Luke Falk. Longest catch of Renard Bell's young career, and he is a big play threat. Falk underneath. And the catch made by Johnson Mack. Washington State got the opening points. USC answered with a touchdown, but the Cougars are driving. Redshirt freshman from guess where? Los Angeles, California. One of 40 Washington State Cougars from Cali. It's going to be a fun one tonight. Tomorrow is the 45th anniversary of Martin Stadium opening back in 1972. They're jumping. They are lit tonight. Good one tonight in the Pac-12, 7-3 USC. Cougars driving to start the second quarter. Falk tosses it up there, and it's incomplete as we check in with Molly McGrath. Yeah, Adam, it's not looking good for USC as Chuma Idoga can't put full weight on his left foot. He's been limping, but he really wants to be back in that game. Uh, when Falk threw it deep, he ran out of the training tent barefoot and ran down the sidelines. He got yelled at for that one. <laughs> Understandably so. This is a hype atmosphere, and man, is he a crucial cog for the USC offense tonight as they deal with injury. Oh, 
Underneath, Tavares Martin Jr. Makes up for the drop for the touchdown. Cougars take the lead again. If you're going to play the air raid and Mike Leach's defense, you better get ready to defend the screens. Running back screens, tunnel screens, Andre Dillard, big 60. Look at him get out on the cornerback, Jack Jones, and get a key block, maybe even a grab as Tavares <laughs> Martin walks into the end zone. You saw too. <laughs> there was a possibility of it, certainly. Eric Powell gives Washington State a 10-7 lead. Seventh touchdown for Martin, tied for the lead in college football with Darren Andrews of UCLA. This is a concern. Chuma Adoga heading back towards the locker room for USC's offense. Back in Pullman, Washington tonight. USC has not lost to Washington State in Pullman since 2002. Clay Helton bringing the Trojans up to the outpost of the Pac-12 known as the Palouse. The Cougars on top with a three-point lead. Stephen Carr will return it. Carr gets the sideline and a good return. Hit shy of the 40-yard line. Tell me about Mike Leach's offense. Well, th well, this was the longest play for Washington State of the season. Also the longest play given up by this USC Trojan defense, and here's why. Excellent safety, Chris Hawkins gets caught taking the cheese. See his eyes right here? He's the deep safety. Nobody's at the back. He takes the underneath route. Nobody takes the deep ball. Excellent pass by Luke Falk, and an easy pitch and catch for a big game. Longest play this year. And Renard Bell already has three catches this season of over 59 yards. A problem at the mesh point between Jones and Darnold. That's a tackle for loss for Derek Moore, who's having a good first half. That's the style of play Washington State has to have. They're an attack front. They're a penetrating front play on the other side of the football. They're predicated on disruption and tackles for loss. Darnold. Intercepted! It is picked off! Sean Harper with the pick! First pick of Sean Harper's career. Sam Darnold's going to try to just find his receiver on a deep out route. But Sean Harper, the quarterback, watch him read the quarterback's eyes, undercut the route. And the Cougars are back in business. One of Clay Helton's biggest concerns about Washington State when he talked to us this week was how fast they have a tendency to start and how slow USC has been starting games. They've been more of a fourth quarter team over the course of this season. That's a major concern in an atmosphere like this, in a game like this. And Washington State, true to form, has had a great start to this football yep. game, already with an early lead and the football back looking for more points. Clay Helton's got to be urging his football team to close this half and finish this half strong. After the interception by Harper, Washington State sets up in plus territory. Falk through the hands of Kyle Sweet. That's three drops now for Washington State. The ball's slightly high, but that, that's a catchable football. And for Sweet, he's a sure-handed receiver. That's his calling card. Possession receiver over the middle of the field. Uncharacteristic of him not to come down with that ball. Hand off Williams. And he'll work his way to the 41-yard line. 
It's been a rough week for USC in terms of injuries. Christian Rector has been playing outside for USC as a linebacker, essentially, because Porter Gustin is dealing with that torn bicep and the broken toe. So Christian Rector has had to basically change positions for Clay Helton's defense. He's been fantastic. A versatile guy, extremely athletic, can play outside, inside. You see him here lined up as a defensive end. Over the middle, and it is incomplete. Renard Bell could not hold on to it. But Jane A. Harris had the coverage on Bell that time. No clear possession of the football and an upfield move, so the officials rule it incomplete. His receivers got it start helping Luke Fall. Yeah. That's a fourth drop we've seen this evening. All the passes have been on target from Luke Fall. And true to form of Mike Leach, yep. he don't believe in putting in situations like this. Fourth and five. Time out here. Decision time for Mike Leach. In plus territory, first time out of the half. So Pullman was used to refer to railroad sleeping cars, which were built and operated by the Pullman Company. George Pullman was the founder of it. The city of Pullman, named after George, incorporated in the 1880s. Had a chance to meet the mayor of Pullman earlier tonight. That was fun. He's the PA guy, believe it or not. So Mike Leach opting to punt here on fourth down and pin USC deep. Mitchell Cox pins USC inside the 10 yard line. We got to meet Glenn Johnson earlier today. He's the mayor of Pullman, Washington, and the 38-year public address announcer here at Martin Stadium. Professor at Washington State for quite some time. Our buddy Cindy Brunson, Jamie Sire, they were students of Glenn Johnson. The only four-term mayor in the history of Pullman, Washington. How about that on your resume? Very impressive, Mr. Johnson. That was very un-Mike Leach-esque. I like the call. Just kind of him stepping out of his comfort zone, putting the football in fourth and five. Vaughn's in space. Good tackle by Moulton. Yeah, were you a little shocked by that? I, I felt uh, I felt like Leach would still go for it after the timeout. It's quite conservative for Mike Leach. I mean, maybe he's understanding the magnitude of this game, how important each possession is, and, and to try to make USC drive the length of the field. Again, I like the call. It's just not something we see every week for Mike Leach. Jones and a penalty flag like whistles this play dead yep prior to the snap false start offense number 82 five yard penalty second down you know this Washington State defense has really settled in the opening drive USC goes right down the field and since then forced a couple of punts come up with a big turnover so Alex Grinch's crew the speed D as they call themselves really starting to pick up their play against the SC offensive attack and this offensive line for USC is starting to feel the attrition right now Viani Talamaivau the most experienced offensive lineman for USC is down they're without Toa Lobendon tonight he did not make the trip we saw Chuma Adoga get hurt earlier in this half and now Talamaivau, at least for USC fans, for the moment, they can breathe a sigh of relief as he's jogging off on his own. Big physical offensive lineman. He does a nice job on the interior. At this point in time, USC cannot afford to lose any more of the big guys up front. You've got to thank that front for Washington State who makes a living in offense's backfield has got to be licking their chops against a bunch of guys that don't typically see the field. And a timeout. USC.
Some concern for Clay Helton. We'll step aside. Emotion and passion. First time that Washington State and USC meet since 2014. Unbeatens with college football playoff implications tonight. Our Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week as Washington State in front. Second down for USC deep in its own territory. Jones. Work his way to the 14 yard line. You got to remember, Adam, this is a USC football team. We said battle tested, but man, they've had their lumps. Western Michigan, Stanford, Texas, Cal. We're talking physical football games, and here they are in their fifth straight, and it seems like it's starting to take its toll. Three backup offensive linemen are in the game for USC on third and four. Jones, big hole, first down and more. Ronald Jones. Welcome back to the lineup. He'll go 86 for the lead. Huge, huge play. And a great job by the quarterback. He checks into that play at the line of scrimmage. He checked into that. Got his offense in exactly what they needed to be. And how about Clayton Johnston? On the right side. Opened up a big hole for Ronald Jones. Man, does Ronald Jones have some speed? Woo! Wow. This dude ran a 10-3-7, 100-meter dash in high school. And USC takes a four-point advantage. We've talked about this USC offensive line, how beat up they are, how tough things are going to be. Clayton Johnson get the kick out here, open up a big hole off the right side. We're going to talk about a playmaker. Ronald Jones is just that. Missed a week ago with a bruised thigh. No problems here this evening. We mentioned the speed, Dusty. He wanted to add some bulk in the offseason, though, Ronald Jones. He's out of McKinney, Texas. You know what Texas boys love? They love themselves some Whataburger. So his plan, because there's no Whataburger where he was at, out in L.A., five guys, little Popeyes, no McDonald's, maybe a little bit of Chick-fil-A, and then hit the weight room, and he was able to put on a bunch of weight. He's over 200 pounds now. And he says he hasn't lost any of that speed. I'm on the same diet. I've lost a step or two, I would say. That was my diet back in college. <laughs> I had to bulk up and play defensive line. Well, that must be nice, right? To have nothing but a fast food diet. You putting on muscle. No ill effects from the water burger on that run. Uh, I was going to say, no in and out burger on that list for him. Though. I'm a little disappointed. I know he's a Texas kid, but... Like the, well, you know, water burger is better than in and out. Man, Come on. we're going to have a discussion about overrated. this. We're going to have a discussion about Coast. this as we as we go forward this season. This is going to be a discussion, I, I imagine. Taylor will take it out of the end zone. Spins off one tackle. Good chase down. Levi Jones running him down. Well, there is a penalty marker on the play on the far side. right near where the tackle was made. During the return, holding. 22 return team. Half the distance from the end of the run, first down. We'll kick off your week four NFL Sunday on ESPN. We've got Sunday NFL countdown at 10 o'clock Eastern time, also available on the ESPN app. Sam and the crew will get you going for week number four. Got a good one. I've got Panthers and Patriots on the radio on Sunday. That should be good. Might see a lot of these guys in the NFL someday. These Jet fans are hoping that they're <laughs> going to have Sam Tarnold in that jersey. How about that? Jet fans. <laughs> Starving for a quality oh, quarterback. Man. Could be go. Sam Darnold. Could be. Batted down. Yeah. Intercepted. Uchenna Nuosu with the play of the night on defense for USC.
Uchenna Nwosu, man, you watch the film. It's unbelievable his ability to slow the rush down when it's quick game, get his hands up, and back to football. And that's exactly what we see here working off the left edge. See him slow it down as the ball's coming out, bat the ball down. Was it hot potato there? Whew. It's off Ochenna Nwosu. It's off the offensive lineman, Cole Madison. And then a very athletic play by the senior, Uchenna Nwosu, with a game-changing play, setting the Trojans up inside the five. Wow, how quickly this game just changed over the course of two plays. Jones. Hercules Mata'afa was there for the stop. Second and goal. Take another look at this interception by Nwosu. Just love how he slows the rush down. So many pass rushers will continue to rush up the field. Not this guy. He's a savvy veteran. He has great feel for when that ball's coming out quick. Shuts down the rush, gets the hands up, and you saw the athleticism as he finishes the play and gets the turnover. That's 11 takeaways in the last three games for USC. They had four picks against Cal last week. It sets him up here. Darnold, back shoulder, nearly intercepted by Strong. Boy, that would have shifted the momentum very quickly. Instead, it's third down and goal. Marcus Strong just makes an unbelievable play. Sam Darnold puts it outside shoulder, only his guy can get it. Marcus Strong, great break on the football, should have had an interception. Ooh. Well, how big is this third and goal now? Huge. This would be a huge win for Washington State if they can keep the Trojans out. Got to think play action right here because you think Alex Grinch and this defense is going to be selling out. Straight up the gut. Nothing there for Carr. And the Wazoo defense stands strong inside their own five. Huge stop by the Cougar defense. Backs up against the wall. Say, not up in here. Garrett McBroom, excellent penetration from the inside. And Alex Grinch loves what he's seeing from his defense with a big goal line stand. That last five play sequence, that was something. This could be a wildly different score right now. Instead, McGrath makes it a seven-point USC lead. My goodness. This is a Washington State defense that is in its third season under Alex Grinch. Alex Grinch was the safeties coach at Missouri. He was 34 years of age when he got a late-night phone call from Mike Leach. Remember, Mike's out on the West Coast, Alex out in Missouri in the central time zone, and a very late night phone call which is typical of Mike Leach he's quite the night owl as you know does so he makes the phone call and says do you want to be a defensive coordinator Alex Grinch of course has to take the job but there was some questioning about this how is this team going to recruit how are they going to bring quality players to Pullman when you have to recruit against USC against Oregon against UCLA and many other schools on the talent rich west coast well you said it he had to compromise something but the system has worked speed Giving up size to bring speed, athleticism. Alex Grinch told us in the Pac-12, you got to be able to run with people. And that's exactly the way he's constructed this defense. And year by year, it continues to get better and better and better under the guidance of Alex Grinch. Back. Out to the 25 comes Washington State. Rematch of the ACC championship game from a year ago. The defending national champion and second-ranked Clemson will head to Blacksburg, one of the toughest atmospheres in which to play, especially at night, to take on 12th-ranked Virginia Tech. And Justin Fuente, who has been seamless in his transition, taking over for Frank Beamer. He's been so impressed with job that Justin Fuente's done last year. Had a great season in year number one. Gerard Evans leaves. He's playing a true freshman quarterback and off to a 4-0 start. And Deshaun Watson leaves Clemson. No problem. 
Next man up. It is Kelly Bryant for Clemson. Nothing there for Wicks. We were questioning Clemson a little bit strictly because of the quarterback position. Everywhere else, we knew there was talent, especially on defense, but man, has Kelly Bryant assimilated himself fast. He just reload at Clemson. But Dabo Sweeney's built there at this point, very reminiscent of the Alabama Crimson Tide where big-time players leave each year, and they've got a slew of big-time players coming up to fill the void. Falk overthrown for Sweet. Third down and ten. The three of us got together and figured out our top storylines, kind of what stuck out to us. For me, it's Penn State passing their first test. You heard Dusty talk about Clemson. Molly, why do you think TCU has been underestimated? Well, Adam, I, we talked about this last night. It's so funny because we have the, the preseason rankings and you never know what you're going to get. And TCU is one of those schools that everyone underestimated because their secondary is so solid. You know Gary Patterson's going to have a great defense and Sonny Cumbie with their offense is really clicking right now. They're definitely one of the teams that we didn't see coming. All those teams with quality wins. I thought Penn State asserted itself very well on the road in Iowa City the other night. And obviously Clemson's had a signature win beating Auburn earlier this season as well. Don't forget Louisville. We went to Louisville and got a win as well. Yeah, oh, that's right, that's right, of course. On the road that night, on a Saturday night. And now Malik Dorton has to be helped up to his feet. The attrition continues for USC. The question was what? Battle tested or battle scarred? And some of those scars are starting to show a little bit. And now even Jack Jones, the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week, was stretching out a little bit for USC and on the flip side we've talked so much about Washington about USC and their four game stretch this Washington State team they haven't even left the Palouse yet yeah. their fifth straight home game to start this season it's the first time in program history Washington State has opened up with five consecutive home games big third down fall Loops it, incomplete. But penalty markers come flying in with Iman Marshall in coverage. Eight. Pass interference, defense number eight, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Clay Helton beside himself after that pass interference penalty which will spot Washington State at the 40 this is what we were talking about Dusty only team to have five straight home games in the FBS but you have to pay for it on the back end five of your final seven are on the road you better make them count early then which they have and they're trying to continue that here this evening but a tough road to hoe the second half of the season for Washington State Wicks hit by Cam Smith at the 43 it's just very uncommon you know, you'd, you'd like as a as a player and as a team to have a little bit of both, right? To have a nice uh, mixture to where it balances out the entire season. Now, I don't think Mike Leach or Washington State's going to apologize for all the home games to start the season, but I can promise you by season's end, it's going to be a taxing road trip week after week as they close up the season in Pac-12 play. Second down for Falk. Under pressure, and down he goes for the third time. Christian Rector leading the charge, continuing his outstanding play these last few weeks. That's a screen that they have that they try to set up. It wasn't there, and Luke Falk just decides he's going to eat it and take the sacks. It's a screen. The offensive linemen are getting out. He didn't like the look that he had. Do you and like that? Give me sack for USC. Is that a smart play? Do you think from Falk there? If he doesn't feel that he can get rid of the football and get it down the field or out of bounds, then sure. But it seemed like he had way more time than what he did. So I put that one on the quarterback. Well, this time stands in the pocket and delivers for a first down to Tavares Martin. From walk-on to record setter, he's got the new Pac-12 record for completions passing up Sean Mannion of Oregon State. And now Tavares Martin has to go to the sideline. Big loss if he doesn't come back. An excellent route on that dig. 
And great touch on the football from the quarterback, Luke Falk. You said dig. That's a common Mike Leach route in his offense. Falk with time. Falk with a man. Nearly intercepted by Iman Marshall. Trying to find Tay Martin, the true freshman. Falk high with his pass. He had an open receiver and Tay Martin. And Iman Marshall. That was a gift. Ball thrown over the outstretched arms of Martin and Marshall unable to come down with the interception. Both quarterbacks getting away with a little bit here mm -hmm. tonight, Dust. Mm -hmm. Blitz. And hits. John Houston delivers the blow. Another USC sack. Talked about Clancy Pendergast. Likes to bring pressure. An excellent job by John Houston up at the line of scrimmage. She's going to come right off the edge. Unaccounted for. And Luke Falk once again doesn't feel the pressure. Takes another sack. Four drops, four sacks. Nearly picked off by Cam Smith that time. These quarterbacks were in rhythm early. Now the defenses are starting to assimilate. Boy, Luke Falk, a couple of passes there, living in the danger zone. That ball nearly intercepted by Cameron Smith. In the underneath zone coverage, Falk tries to fit the ball over his head. Fortunate that ball wasn't picked off. So Eric Powell will kick to a Jane Harris. Whistles blow this play dead with a flag from the far side. Flag on Full start. 38 offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Zaire Webb will push him back five yards. Washington State uses two different punters. Eric Powell is their typical place kicker. And he will boot away left-footed punts. And then Kyle Sweet, who's a receiver and a punter, he does the rugby-style kicking. This is the left-footer, Powell. Another whistle. Another flag. Delay a game on the defense. Illegal movement. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. A defensive penalty here, so we're back to square one. Very rhythmic start to this game for both QBs, for both offenses, and gotten a little bit more herky-jerky in the last quarter plus. Looks like they're trying to calm down Luke Falk on the sidelines, talk through some things. Fair catch for Harris, who makes the smart decision and lets it head to the end zone. we got some fun games coming up tomorrow, man. I'm curious about Vanderbilt, Florida. We've got Mississippi State, Auburn tomorrow night. Alabama, Ole Miss. Don't forget Clemson, Virginia Tech. You can take all those games everywhere you go on the ESPN app. You can download it at ESPN.com slash app. Plus, you'll get the scores, the news, delivering highlights to you in real time. All that stuff is available to you on the ESPN app. Not sure if you knew this, but it's long travels from Pullman to Oklahoma City. I'm aware. <laughs> I'll be on the ESPN app watching some football tomorrow. I'm, I'm headed to Boston, baby. It's going to be a long flight. <laughs> I can assure you that. <laughs> Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath, a fantastic crew in Pullman. Two unbeaten, squaring off in Pac-12 after dark tonight. Sam Darnold, underthrown in a tough pocket to throw from. Looking for Josh Imaturbebe. So far, both quarterbacks sitting at 50%.
beat out. Incomplete. Looking for Joseph Lewis. Donald seemed just a tad off tonight. He does, doesn't he? And I don't think it's the things that we were necessarily talking about over the course of the last two weeks necessarily forcing the issue. He just looks a little off kilter. And there hasn't been a lot of pressure from Washington State. Don't forget, a lot of subs in the offensive line for USC right now. That looked more like typical Sam Darnold as he finds Imator Bebe right at the sticks. It's going to be short. It's going to be short. That was excellent. Excellent pass rush on the inside. Daniel Equale put a move on the center. Forced Sam Darnold to step up, get that ball out quickly. A nice effort by Alex Grinch and his defense yep. once again forcing the Trojan punt. I don't think it's been, I don't want to take anything from Washington State or Alex Grinch, but I don't necessarily think it's been Washington State forcing Sam Darnold to making mistakes. I think he hasn't brought his A game so far. That opening drive, he was fantastic. Sure. Since then, seems a little uncomfortable. High snap, and Budrovich does a good job of handling it and bombing one downfield. Reed Budrovich absolutely flips the field for USC. Robert Taylor gets smacked by Joseph Lewis. That's a 63-yarder. Hey, you were talking about it. Let's talk QB pressure tonight. Well, part of it's on Falk. He hasn't been able to see all the blitzes. He hasn't had good field for the pressure. And you got to give this USC front a lot of credit. He's done an excellent job, whether it's been four-man rushes, bringing pressure and getting home. Been a lot of pressure on the senior quarterback, Luke Falk. He's very good at reading progressions, as you talked about. That's something Clancy Pendergast pointed out to us immediately. Hey, that's why he's an NFL guy. He's got an NFL body. He can stand strong in the pocket. Goes one, two, three, check down. That's what you want from an NFL QB. But it does hurt you at the collegiate level sometimes. It's going to hurt you at the next level as well. Oh, uh, sure. It's a good point. Going to be able to have that clock in your head. No, that ball's got to come out. Williams on first down to the 10. Luke Falk, as you mentioned, we've told you he's a walk-on, or was a walk-on when he came to Washington State, but he was so unheralded that his biography was non-existent in the Washington State media guide. That's how overlooked he was. The sports information staff wasn't even too worried about him at that point. Mike Leach told me the best walk-on he's ever coached. Quite the statement from the head coach of Washington State. Great runner, but he can move, and he's got the first down out to the 20. Cameron Smith caught up to him there. Nice play by Luke Falk. Nothing's down the field. As we said, he doesn't force the issue. He is not going to do that very much. Nope. But a nice lane opens up. He sees it, picks up a nice game. It's our fifth game this year, Adam, and every week we've been somewhere. We see walk-on after walk-on after walk-on, not just making the team of being a starter, but being impact-quality players. It's great to see. Great thing about college football. Didn't force the issue that time and found Gerard Wicks on the check down for a few yards. Luke Falk, his dad Mike, when Luke went into his freshman year, got a phone call from the throw-in Samoan, Jack Thompson, one of the great QBs in a long line at Washington State. And all he told Luke's dad was, hey, if Luke ever needs anything, and he's a walk-on, mind you, if he ever needs anything, have him call me. And that's the fraternity of Washington State quarterbacks. Drew Bledsoe, Mark Rippin, the throw-in Samoan, Ryan Leaf, Jason Gesser. And now Luke Falk finding Kyle Sweet for a first down. Sweet's kind of taken that River Craycraft role from a season ago. Short intermediate routes, sure-handed receiver. Nice pitch and catch for the Cougars. Falk has the check down. It's Williams. And Williams has a first down. 
Dusty, what's the hardest part about facing a Mike Leach offense? Because you, when you were at Oklahoma, you played Texas Tech a whole lot. Tackling. Tackling in space. That's what this offense is all about. They want to spread the field out. They want to create a lot of, as much grass, as much space they possibly can, and force you to tackle. As you saw right there, just a simple swing pass out of the backfield, an extension of the run. Get the ball to running back on the perimeter. You've got to tackle well. And you've really got to do a good job in underneath zone coverage and rallying up the tackle. As USC does there after a nine-yard gain by Jameer Calvin. Marvell Tell was the tackler to finally close out the play as we hit the two-minute mark of the first half. The one thing I hated about playing against Mike Leach when he was in Texas Tech. Oh, tell me. You got to run, man. <laughs> I mean, they don't huddle up. I You're knew always, it. You I put knew your it. hand in the ground. <laughs> again, they make you defend the entire field. So get your track spikes ready when you're playing against Mike Leach air raid offense. Morrow, great cut. And Morrow with a first down to the 30. The smaller, shifty back. That's a prototypical Mike Leach back. B.J. Salmonson on the right side. Excellent job getting to the second level. And an excellent cut by the senior, Jamal Moore. Vision, quickness, very shifty out of the backfield. USC timeout. Second charge timeout, USC. Remember that USC will get the ball to start the second half. So this is a very important final 80 seconds for Washington State's offense. Got to come away with points. Man, seven's a lot better than three. How they manage this final minute 20, which for an offense like this feels like an eternity. Extremely important that they close this half out and finish this drive. When USC and Washington State have met as ranked opponents, it's typically been USC dominating. This is the first time since 2003 that these teams are meeting as ranked opponents. USC is 6-1 and one in the prior seven meetings with five double-digit wins, and Washington State has never beaten a top-five USC team. Big burst. James Williams dragged down by Tell, shy of the line to gain, but another strong run. Cody O'Connell, they call him the Continent, going to get around and get a nice block on the outside. He goes by 6'9", 360-plus pounds, as you see him bury the linebacker at the second level. We got a dude alert, man. This is the guy right here, Cody O'Connell. Unanimous All-American last year. What do you call him, a road grader? He's a road grader. Big as a Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Love the nickname too, man. We asked him about that nickname, The Continent. And he's like, hey, Mike Leach gave it to me. I was a freshman. I just go with it, man. I just go with it. The head coach says it. You got to go with it. He is a massive human being. We had Molly McGrath stand next to him. That was, <laughs> that was pretty entertaining, but... You know, this is a guy who's going to play at the next level. An All-American uh, a season ago, and when you watch this guy play, and he gets locked up on a defender, it's lights out. We got a moment here after the timeout. Wanted to make sure we got you up to speed. Adnan Verk, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer are coming up. They've got the halftime report. They'll recap what happened earlier tonight, plus get you set up for a big Saturday in college football, leading you to Blacksburg for Clemson and Virginia Tech tomorrow night on ABC. First down and 10 for the 20. Tavares Martin will take it to the 15-yard line. Pick the pace up here. This is good clock management by Washington State, although they'll use their final timeout here with 29 seconds to go. Now while we have a moment, let's check in with Adnan Verk in the studio.
Thanks so much, Adnan. By the way, beg your pardon. There's still one timeout remaining for Washington State. They had two left. The previous play, there was no timeout used, so they still have one timeout. This is really good clock management from Mike Leach. Fall to the end zone for Martin and incomplete but a penalty flag comes in and Jack Jones and Tavares Martin get right in each other's faces like a grab by Jack Jones as they got into the end zone pass interference defense number 25 ball replaced on the two yard line first down Excellent job by Tavares Martin at the line of scrimmage. Look at him win inside. And Jack Jones, he can get as mad as he wants to. He's grabbing, he's pulling, he's tugging. It's a good call by the official. I that like is. the John, though, man. Yeah, I like it. I was going to say, that's like West Coast, East Coast right there. Morrow trying to pound forward. And he's going to be marked shy of the line to gain. Washington State still has a timeout. And they'll use it here with 16 seconds left. How big is this next play if Washington State can get the touchdown? Well, it's huge because if USC gets a stop, they go into the locker room inspired. Hey, we did something. We got the stop we needed. We have the lead at halftime. They don't. It's the other way around, right? They're feeling sorry for themselves. They just got driven on the length of the field. Remember. This is on the heels of an unbelievable punt. This drive started all the way back inside the five. And so for Washington State to sustain a drive like this and finish it in the end zone, that's going to give nothing but confidence to Washington State and have USC walk into the locker room hanging their heads. So obviously for the scoreboard purposes, but inside the locker room, that mentality as they go in, huge couple of plays coming up. I'll be surprised if we see a run here. Because remember, no timeouts left at yeah. this point. If they run the football, it's going to be tough for them to get up and get another playoff. So, look for Washington State to go try to get this touchdown via the air. Third and final timeout, USC. USC will use its final timeout. To your point, Dusty, that's typical Mike Leach, though. Coming into tonight, 15 red zone touchdowns. 13 of them have been passing touchdowns in the red zone. So I would expect the same here. Plus, the clock factor is also the biggest reason why. You don't want to have a run play get stuffed and then have the final seconds tick away trying to rush a field goal unit on. For some offenses, you get inside the red zone, the field shrinks, becomes tougher to complete passes. Not for this offense. Thirteen of those fifteen scores have been through the air. Big play, second and goal. Morrow, they run it in for a touchdown. How about it? Four-yard drive, tie game. Well, that's why Mike Leach is on the sidelines, <laughs> one of the best offensive minds in college football, and I'm up here in the booth. <laughs> Fool me. What this excellent job blocking on the right side. Cole Madison, good job on the Wusu, and a great cut by Jamal Morrow as he walks into the end zone and we're knotted up here in Pullman.
Jamal Morrow, a Southern California native, he said he was excited but not too excited to play USC because he was more of a UCLA fan growing up, but like a lot of kids growing up in that time, big Reggie Bush fan. So this was a big night for him and a lot of California natives playing against USC. Uncle Moe's in the building tonight, man. That was a big touchdown for Washington State. Washington State's got a chip on their shoulder, man. We talked to Alex Grinch about it. A lot of these kids you mentioned, 40 different kids from California, overlooked, weren't good enough to go to USC. Supposedly. They got, they got, I'm just saying. They got, no, they got no, a lot, I, yeah, they got, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Here on this field this evening. No doubt, man. Bayless Jones. And he gets chased down shy of the 30-yard line. No timeouts left. And we'll see if we head to the locker room tied at 17 apiece. Three matchups of ranked teams. This is one of them. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Wells Fargo has number two Clemson at 12th ranked Virginia Tech from Lane Stadium. Maybe the biggest game in the regular season under Justin Fuente so far in his tenure. Certainly could argue that point. That'll be a fun one tomorrow night. We will go to the locker room tied at 17 apiece. We thought when we came here to Pullman, we were going to have a heck of a football game. We're through one half. It's been that and some. Woo! This second half, it's going to be fun, partner. My guess is you should probably stick around for it. We've got the halftime report coming up. Adnan Burke, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer. Jesse, I went for a yacht today. It was great. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. Thanks, Larry. 17 up, USC, Washington State, two unbeatens, meeting his ranked opponents for the first time since 2003. Momentum shift after momentum change in that opening half. We've talked about it all night. USC says they're a fourth quarter team. Washington State says they're a first half team. Molly McGrath, talk to Mike Leach about it. USC known as a second half team. How do you change that and prevent that? Well, so are we. All right, like it. Thanks, Coach. Love that response from Mike Leach. He want to hear about USC. He says we're a good second half, fourth quarter team too. Out to the 25 comes USC. Molly. Yeah, Clay Houghton's message was really interesting. He told his team, Washington State is a start-fast team. That first half is theirs. You look up, you blink, and they've tied the game. Well, guess what? This half is ours. He told his guys, we are much stronger in the second half. So some differing of opinions between Mike Leach and Clay Houghton, guys. The juxtaposition of these two programs, of these two coaches, of these two quarterbacks, absolutely fascinating. The dichotomy is in front of us tonight. USC from the 25. First down run for Jones for three. Now we welcome you back into the broadcast booth. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak. Your thoughts after what we saw in that first half. What you expected, what you didn't expect, what do you think? Tough, hard-fought football game. I mean, I think both teams continue to fight back, battle back. When it seemed like USC had seized momentum, Washington State yeah. was not going to be denied a huge goal line stand and a big-time drive to close out the half and tie this thing uh, tie this thing up. Darnold for Vaughns. He had it. There's a flag throw. It's going to be ruled as an incompletion, but there was a penalty marker thrown with Moulton in coverage. The offense 21. Pass interference. Offense number 21. Half the distance to the goal. Remain second down. But Clay Helton has disagreed a whole lot tonight with Steve Stribling's crew. Tyler Vaughn is a big receiver. Outside release. bolton has got a piece of the jersey. Could have easily been holding. Ooh, that's a bad call. He didn't push off. It's a bad call by the official. It should have been defensive holding. And instead, it's a USC offensive pass interference. Tough break for the Trojans out of the half.
Burnett. Ended up running into his own man, and Nate DeRider ends up with the tackle. We got to go back and take another look at this play, Dust. Kind of perplexing. Moulton's got a hold of the back of his jersey. I mean, all Tyler Vaughn's is trying to do is just get, a, get his arm off of him. That's a bad call by the official. But you got to play on. Jones, and he'll get shut down at the 24-yard line. And, and that's what has to get better in the second half for USC. We saw the big run by Ronald Jones, nice 86-yard run. But other than that, USC has not been very effective running the football. You got to remember, three offensive linemen are down. Typically, when you have to bring in young, inexperienced offensive linemen, far better in run blocking than pass blocking and clearly Sam Darnold has been extremely uncomfortable and not fully believing in the offensive line in front of him. Budrovich handles it. Really good punts. Bobbled by Morrow. That's a free ball. And 31 yard line is where Washington State will take over. Cougars first series of the second half. When you come back, 86-yard TD run, the longest in 21 years for Jones in the first half. Luke Falk with the completion record in Pac-12 history. Productive night on offense. We expect some more when you come back. Four and zero against four and zero. USC and Washington State. Sam Darnold unable to do much on that first USC series. Tough call went against. The USC offense as well. Now it's the Cougar offense's turn from the 31 yard line. Ball to Morrow. Chopped down by Jones, but a flag is thrown in the offensive backfield. Holy offense number 75. 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. BJ Salmonson, the right guard. Right guard Salmonson's getting a bull rush from Green. It's the oldest trick in the book for an offensive lineman. <laughs> Just fall back and grab the, uh, the defensive lineman and let him come on top of you. Good on the official for taking notice of that and throwing the flag. Oh, that, that wasn't a defensive point of view if I've ever heard one, my brother. I'm just saying. <laughs> I've been there. I know you have, happen. man. I know you have. It's weak. From the 21. Isaiah Johnson, Mac in space. For four. In Blacksburg, Virginia, tomorrow night. Saturday night primetime on ABC. Clemson at Va Tech. Also available on the ESPN app. Don't forget game day tomorrow morning from Blacksburg. Ball. Strong in the pocket. Martin. He's hit back at the 27-yard line. Just a two-yard gain. Third down coming up. Rasheem Green working on the inside on Salmonson again. Excellent job. See how he grabs the hands off of him and he continues to push. Gets those hands up. Makes it a tough pocket for Luke Falk. How important is the hand fighting as a defensive line? It's huge, man. It's everything. Guy with the best hands is going to win typically. And right there, Rasheem Green, excellent job using his hands and powering the lineman into the quarterback's line. A big blitz. Falk is hammered, and he delivers on target to Bell. Luke Falk took an absolute shot from Tell and still found 25 yards. A word that describes Luke Falk, tough. He will stare down the gun barrel and deliver a strike. Every time. Not worried about the hit. Big hit delivered by Marvell Tell. The safety coming down on a blitz. But an excellent job by Luke Falk finding Renard Bell and moving the chains. Williams. Good 
penetration that time by Uchenna Nwosu. Kell coming from the high safety. He's late to get there. Man, delivers a big hit on Luke Falk. But no problem for the senior quarterback to step into the throw and find his target. Marvell Tell, they use him everywhere. We can use him as an underneath linebacker. We can use him as the free safety, Clay Helton told us. Falk drops. That time it was Isaiah Johnson Mack who could not corral it. That is now five drops from the Cougar receivers tonight. Typically, these Washington State receivers and running backs are sure-handed. Yep. It's one thing they do so well is catch the football. So far here tonight, a lot of miscues by the wide receivers of Washington State. And Luke Falk throws a very catchable ball. Always puts a nice touch on it, never too much zip. Falk down the seam. First down again on third down. This time it's the true freshman from Pasadena, Jameer Calvin. Jameer Calvin, he's got speed, man. He's got quicks. He's working out of the slot. It's man-to-man -man coverage. And Ikeely Ross just can't run with the speedy true freshman. Tunnel screen. Not much there that time for Martin. But a flag as Uchenna Nuosu may have gotten the face mask. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 42. Half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Big yardage right there to set up first down. Yeah, and Nuosu knew he did it after the play you saw him taking a knee in frustration. Hustling out there to get to the tunnel screen. He was out of position, lunges at him, just reaches to grab anything he can, and a handful of face masks to help aid extra yards after the run. We spot him at the 12-yard line. Wicks. Another penalty marker comes flying in. Must be a holding, holding penalty. Offense number 69. 10-yard penalty. First down. Frederick Mawingoa, the first-year starter at center, gets tagged for it. You were talking about Luke Falk, throws a catchable ball. He's got a lot of great attributes. Let's revisit them. Excellent touch, as we mentioned. Just watch him throw it. Now, some will say, well, doesn't have the best arm strength. I say he can make every throw out there, and he leaves it to where his receivers can make plays in the football. I say cerebral, because this dude knows this offense inside and out. He has complete control to get this offense in the right play. And again, he's best from the pocket, doesn't like to evade and get outside, but we have seen him tonight use his legs a couple of times, kind of uncharacteristic of Luke Falk. Holding on to it. Into a tight window, and Iman Marshall with a good rip against Isaiah Johnson Mack. If there is a criticism of Luke Falk, it probably is that he at times holds on to the ball too long. Wax. Great athleticism, holds on to the ball too long. I mean, he doesn't want to take those risks, doesn't want to take those chances, but it's almost to a fault. As he continues to, to play and as he gets drafted and goes to the next level, because he's an NFL quarterback, that's one thing I'm sure they're really going to work with. That clock inside his head, after two and a half seconds, you got to have the football out. Williams. You saw some of the USC defenders. What do you call it? They tried to start the lawnmower? Start the lawnmower, man. <laughs> Remember Christian Rector in that double overtime against Texas? Just ripped the ball out of Sam Ellinger's hands. That's something that Clancy Pendergast has preached to this defense. They talk about it in meetings. They've worked on it in individual drills, team drills. Said last year, we didn't take the football way enough. Well, that work in practice and in meetings has paid off. Already 11 takeaways heading into nine. Ball. Slings it out, and it will be ruled as an incomplete forward pass for James Williams. Good pressure inside by Rasheem Green. He's really started the second half on a high note. Beats the guard. 
Salmonson once again enforces the air and throw. So the left footer Eric Powell was good from 44 in the first half. Started 0 for 5 last year before he made two big field goals against UCLA to win by six. He's cleared the mechanism. He's been really sharp ever since that rocky start last year. And he connects from 33 to give Washington State the lead. Mike Leach, perhaps the most interesting man in college football. His team's got the advantage nearly halfway through the third. That is a talking pirate. That is a gift from Bobby and Pat Knight to Mike Leach, the head coach who is enamored by pirates. And I think a lot of people can laugh about it or whatever, but there is some real content involved in, into why he actually digs that so much, the pirate culture. He says, it doesn't matter who does the work. It doesn't matter what race you are, what religion you are. If you're a pirate, the goal is the treasure. And that's the mentality that he tries to bestow upon all of the players that come into this Washington State program to play for one of the interesting cats in college football. Eric Powell with a rolling kick to Stephen Carr. Look at the cuts from Carr. Flag is thrown though. Holding, return team number 28, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. The National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper has made its way to Pullman for tonight's game. Atlanta will be the site for this year's college football playoff national championship game. And this game has some playoff implications to it. Certainly for USC, a team with very high expectations. A win tonight for Washington State could swing the momentum in their favor. Sam Darnold back to work. Started so good, it's predicated on quick game. They've gone away from that since that opening drive. Burnett makes a move and steps out across the 20. We've got to remember, this is a USC football team right now without three starting offensive linemen. Yep. Two true freshmen are out there playing in positions that they haven't played in uh, much this season. So what USC is dealing with up front offensive line-wise is a real struggle. But early to start the game, you want to help an offensive line out. Get the quick game going. Get the ball out quick. Get it to your playmakers out in space and force Washington State to make open field tackles. Darnold for Petit, incomplete. Hey, something, Dusty, that this Washington State defense does so well is confuse offensive linemen. They do. They move right before the snap. As you're going to see, they, they move. Now watch McBrew right here. It's an excellent job. They're going to move at the snap, but then they're going to change gaps. You see him get upfield, rip, and a big hit on Sam Darnold to force the bad pass. Constantly moving. You know what that does? It creates confusion for an offensive line. And imagine three guys that aren't used to this creating a lot of confusion up front for USC. Carr spins to the 28-yard line. Third down. Surprised we haven't seen more of Stephen Carr to this point. Yeah, after jumped, what he did last week. Well, he jumped off the tape to me. You know, over 100 yards against Stanford. Made some nice plays against Texas, stepped in for Ronald Jones, but he's a weapon not just running the football, but catches the ball like a wide receiver as well. Matuafa hasn't made a lot of plays so far. We'll see if one of the best pass rushes in the Pac-12 can get some pressure on Sam Darnold. Here comes Matuafa. And Darnold got rid of it, looking for Pittman, who was headed downfield. Top of the hour in Pullman, Washington. A good one brewing tonight on the Palouse. 4-0 USC, 4-0 Washington State. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath, our great crew.
here at Martin Stadium tonight. The winner of this game will remain unbeaten and certainly enhance their resume as we move into October and closer and closer to the college football playoff rankings. That punt's going to die near the 40-yard line. Good field position for Washington State. We told you what's at stake. Come on back. 6.44 to go, third quarter. What does the Pirate have in store for us? Back in Pullman, Washington, you're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. A little Pac-12 after dark from Martin Stadium. A sellout crowd tonight. 33,000. The smallest capacity of any Pac-12 stadium yet. They're bringing the noise and the heat tonight. Four lead changes in this game as Luke Falk goes back to work for Washington State. Big burst on first down for Gerard Wicks. Redshirt senior out of Carson, California, picks up eight. Two quarterbacks. The dichotomy between Sam Darnold and Luke Falk apparent in many aspects tonight. Sam Darnold just has not seemed comfortable since that opening drive. Came out in a great groove, throwing the ball well, using his athleticism, and since then, he's had linemen drop off, and his confidence really wavered throwing the football. Rector makes the stop on Wicks close to the sticks. Let's go back to the top of our broadcast when Molly McGrath brought Sam Darnold out on the field. What did she say? He admitted that he was having some confidence issues over the last couple of weeks. Not an easy thing for a young man to admit, especially a quarterback of a high-level program. Uh, we've seen that waiver at times for various reasons tonight. Yeah, Adam, and after their week one game, he was especially hurting in terms of his confidence. He told Cameron Smith, his roommate, about it. He screenshotted a picture of Tom Brady's stats week one in their loss and said everyone struggles. Short situation. There is Sam Darnold's roommate, Cam Smith, making the stop to bring up fourth down. Well, Cameron Smith, captain on this defense, one of the real vocal leaders. It's an excellent job in the second level. You see him get downhill. Makes a great play. Just sifts through the blocking scheme, beats the guard to the point. Makes a big play for this USC defense on a short third and one to cause the punt. They had second and two and could not convert near midfield. So now Kyle Sweet, rugby style punter typically, will deliver one here. Very short kick. Down at the 33 yard line. That is a 19 yard punt. That's it. So USC with decent field position here. These are two of the unbeatens in the Pac-12. There's a slew of them right now. USC 2-0 already after wins over Stanford and Cal. Washington looks like maybe the best team in the league on both sides of the ball. Washington State, their win over Oregon State and Utah. Off to a great start with a win in a tough game last week in Tucson against Arizona. Had some impressive teams in the Pac-12 so far. I think you're right, Washington. Last year, they came on like gangbusters and had such a great season. They picked up right where they left off from a season ago. We got a good one tonight. Both these teams want to stay undefeated. It's going to be a fight to the very end here in Pullman. Darnold under pressure. Incomplete for Vaughns, but a late penalty marker was thrown. Kirkland Parker was bearing down on Darnold. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 10, throwing the quarterback to the ground late. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Crucial penalty against Washington State, and a big one for USC to move downfield quickly. Kirkland Parker's coming off the edge the boot getting Sam Darn outside the pocket they're gonna say he slammed him to the ground I don't know Adam 
Sam Darnold has been blitzed less this year than he was last. He's been blitzed around the same pace tonight. Just has not been able to connect going downfield. Not much there for Jones. Go back a week, Dusty, against a pretty good Cal defense, by the way, for Justin Wilcox. But Sam Darnold did not have a completion of over 15 yards for the first time in his career. They did a great job last week disguising what they were doing when they were going to bring pressure, their coverages. Sam Darnold was a bit confused. Give the Cal defense a lot of credit, but same goes for tonight with this Alex Grinch-led defense. Darnold steps up. Burnett trying to make a spectacular grab. Great coverage that time by Pippins. You know what I'm noticing as, after almost every throw? Somebody having to help Sam Darnold up off the ground. I mean, once again, he's hit as he delivers a throw. Throw well, ball well overthrown. This pressure continues to get there, and Sam Darnold starting to take a beating. Three-man rush, and it still gets to Darnold. Still on his feet. Shovel pass ahead. There was an eligible receiver in the area in Imatur Bebe. So no grounding, but fourth down, and Alex Grinch's defense has been let loose on the Palouse tonight. Excellent job by the Washington State defense and an ill-advised pass by Sam Darnold. Look at Hercules Matoafa, he's playing just a little spy in the middle. Good job by the Washington State defense, keeping Sam Darnold corralled with nowhere to go to get outside the pocket. That's a dangerous play by Sam Darnold, just flicking the ball out there. He's got to be smarter than that. The question's going to be, is this offensive line going to be able to hold up with all the injuries that they're dealing with right now? Are they going to be able to hold up down the stretch? Excellent punt coverage on the Budrovich kick, and they will pin Washington State very deep. Well, Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Take a breath. Take it all in. What a night. On a Friday night, Pac-12 after dark, to be in this place with this matchup tonight. Johnson Matt hit by Tell. Very quick. This is a big drive for the USC defense because field position could be very important if they can get a three and out. Exactly right. Excellent job on the punt. The special teams have been rock solid tonight for USC. This defense looking to help out their offense and give them some good field position here late in the third. And that's Iman Marshall, one of their top corners. When you're out of Long Beach, California, will be tended to by the training staff. The night started with a Washington State field goal, and then Sam Darnold drove USC down the field on its opening series. Gets outside the pocket, utilizes athleticism. But so much when this drive started. They came out throwing the football, four straight passes. Quick game, quick game, quick game. They were allowed to use his athleticism and get a couple of runs, but we haven't seen that quick game. The RPOs, the run pass option where they tackle with a slant to Deontay Burnett. We saw a lot of that in the opening drive. I haven't seen a whole lot since. Ramon Marshall back up on the sidelines. Isaiah Langley will have to check in for the veteran cornerback who's been a starter since he was a freshman. The training room is going to be full. Oof, man. USC tomorrow morning. Some attrition this week for USC. Morrow out of the backfield. Hurling his way towards the sticks. He'll spot him at the nine. Marvell Tell 
Sent him into the air. We knew Jamal Morrow's got some leaping ability. He's going to go up. Nice job of Marvara Tell to get him out of bounds. Yeah, Tell didn't go like for the ankles. Spot. Yeah, Tell didn't go for the ankles or anything like that. He just tried to push him out. And you're right, Dusty. The spot has them at the nine-yard line here. Third and about a short two. Inside, Rasheem Green has been fantastic as of late. Getting good push from the middle. There he is. Could not bring Falk down, but he forces a bad throw. Right on cue, Dust. I've been watching it. I mean, he's really starting to work. They found a matchup that they're exposing. It's Rasheem Green. An outstanding three technique. Using his hands. Getting up the field. He's starting to work on Salmonson. And you'll see him here. Watch the hands. Grabs that elbow. Lifts it up. Comes inside. Should have gotten the sack, but forces the Aaron throw and gets the defense off the field. This is what we talked about. Three and out. Chance for good field position here. And Eric Powell will punt. Bad bounce. Excellent field position coming up here for USC inside the 30. What a win for the USC defense. Just like you said, Adam. Trying to change the field position, change the old momentum. They put them back deep. They get the three and out that they want. And another bad punt by Washington State. 17-yard punt in total to give USC great field position. Both of these teams, USC and Washington State, do not have a bye until November. USC will play 12 games and then get a bye Thanksgiving weekend. Washington State will play 11 games, then get a bye. But USC has been dealing with injuries aplenty these last couple of weeks. Can they cash in on a great field position? Quick game for Burnett. That's exactly what you just said. You wanted to see more of, Dusty. Roll the pocket, allow him to get outside, use his athleticism where he's very comfortable. That helps out the offensive line, and the ball's out quick to Deont Deontay Burnett. game again looking for Burnett over the middle and what a hit by the outstanding safety Jalen Thompson a flag is thrown though this is a very important call that's the RPO with the slant tag to Burnett as we talked about going back to a lot of the things that they had success success with in that opening drive and as you said Adam a crucial call coming from the officials Personal foul, targeting, defense number two. That play is under further review. The penalty yardage will be hit no matter what. There's a personal foul on this play against Robert Taylor. So it's going to be first down for USC. But now the targeting call is the crucial one. Watch Taylor going head-to-head -head with Deontay Burnett there. Good clean hit by Jalen Thompson. That's picture perfect, people. Jalen Thompson comes in, gets the helmet to the side, does not go above the head or neck area. It's the second defender that comes in. Robert Taylor. So here's what we have to target. Yep, here, sorry, Dustin. Here's what we have to look at. Where was the contact made? With what was the contact made in terms of the spot in the helmet, and was there an indicator of targeting there? Was there a launch? Was there a thrust at all from Taylor? Because Burnett is a defenseless player going over the middle. As a receiver, he is automatically a defenseless player. Was there forcible contact with the crown of the helmet? Was there forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player? And of course, is there an indicator of the targeting? This will be a crucial call coming up. After video review, it's been determined there was no targeting, there is no foul. We go to the play second down. 
Now, I believe there should be a first down, though, here, based on what Steven Strimlin told us. He said there's a personal foul with targeting. So they may have to go back and look at that. Well, they've wiped it away. I just want to say great job by the officials to look at that. It didn't look like targeting to me. They had a chance to look at it a second time, and I think they got that call right. I agree with no targeting, but they called a personal foul there. And now the defense starting to step it up. Hercules Mataafa with a loss of four. Well, Hercules Mataafa, one of the quickest defense alignment in all of college football, just creates havoc. Unbelievably quick. Watch this first step. Look at him get inside. Create havoc just up the field and delivers the big hit and tackle for loss. Time out here for USC. Less than a minute to play here in this third quarter. Leach is nervous. You get that sense from him right now? I think he's just into it, man. I think he recognizes and realizes how action-packed this game is, how close it is. Yep. Any play, any call can swing things one way or another. We got a good one here tonight in Pullman. Again, this is a game that does have not only Pac-12 implications, but college football playoff implications. A win like this for Washington State would swing momentum in their favor in terms of the resume. And USC, if they get a win tonight with the attrition they're dealing with on the road in Pac-12 play, what a statement this would be for the Trojans. Darn it. Using that athleticism, and he's down to the 11-yard line. Frankie Luvu with the stop. Interesting. Alex Grinch is starting to use Hercules as a spot. Drops him back there. Actually, a nice job by Sam Darnold making a miss in the open field. But still, the Washington State defense with good coverage down the field. Darnold uncomfortable in the pocket. They rally up. They get the tackle to force the field goal. try and McGrath buries it let me go back and clarify something I heard the officials say personal foul targeting it was not personal foul penalty with targeting so that is my apologies there that's why that penalty was taken off usually officials will tell you personal foul let's say unnecessary roughness with targeting that personal foul would have stuck on Taylor had there been a personal foul and an unnecessary roughness penalty along with the targeting. They took the targeting off. That was the lone penalty called by Steven Strimling, our Pac-12 official. That's why that was a third down play instead of a second or a second down play rather than a first down play. Compliments to the replay move. Yes, well done. And, you know, for, for our truck, getting all the good pictures so that they can make the proper call, I thought that was the right call. I did not think Robert Tra Taylor came in, and I didn't think he launched. I didn't think he led with the crown of the helmet. And clearly the referees saw what I saw up here in the booth. Again, this is the first full season of collaborative replay for the Pac-12. They communicate with the replay command center in San Francisco to get these calls right in a collaborative effort. They had great field position, USC, but only could get three points. We're tied at 20. Touchback. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Huge ACC matchup. Couple of unbeatens. Number two, Clemson on the road in Blacksburg to take on number 12, Virginia Tech. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Also available on the ESPN app. Bud Foster, Brent Venables, a couple of guys that know a thing or two about defense. Clemson, probably the best defense in all of college football, definitely the best front four. 
Bud Foster, talk about a guy that's not afraid to bring some pressure. There's going to be some uncomfortable quarterbacks tomorrow night in Blacksburg, Adam. Good defenses in action tomorrow night. Sweet with the 29. That will be likely the final play of the third. Clay Helton told us this week and reiterated it to Molly McGrath at halftime. USC is a fourth quarter team. They've been battling. They're in a battle right now with a really good Washington State bunch. We're through three in Pullman. Pac-12 on ESPN, Pac-12 after dark. 20 up as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter at Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington. Cougar football, second down. Ball. Incomplete, looking for Morrow. Third down coming up for Washington State. Two teams meeting as ranked opponents for the first time since 2003. USC has not lost in Pullman since 2002. Washington State has never beaten a top five USC Trojan team. Here's Green again, working on Simonson. Falk delivers a first down strike to Renard Bell. Offensive line held up nicely against Green there. They ran a twist inside. Excellent job by the interior of the Washington State offensive line. Plenty of time and a clean pocket for Luke Falk to deliver a big third down to Renard Bell. upset when a J.N.A. Harris came missling in. They could be upset. That's a good no call. The defender got their tag touch late, but I'm okay with the no call. Yeah. Also okay with hopping up and letting know he didn't appreciate it. It's getting heated down there, Adam. Another five-man rush. Morrow again. Staying on his feet for a few more yards and a first down. Down to the 42-yard line. Holding offense number one. Ten yards from the spot of the pass. We play second down. And they'll tag the true freshman, Tate Martin, on that penalty. One thing we're seeing happening here, as the ball continues to get distributed to the Washington State running backs, you get matched up in man-to-man -man situations. That was Jamal Morrow on number 10, John Houston. And Houston just can't get out there and cover him in man-to-man -man coverage. They're easy throws with grass in front for these running backs to run. And even though it was a holding, we've seen that be very successful here in the second half for the Cougar offense. Setting it up once again for Isaiah Johnson. Mack to the 49-yard line. John Houston on the stop for USC's defense. Third down coming up. Luke Falk has been... done a nice job on third down. His offensive line's given him time to survey the field and distribute the football. How many bigger than this one here? So far this evening, Adam. 104 yards on third down, including a touchdown. Back out to Williams. And he has the first down. Cam Smith chased him down, but not before he moved the chains to the 42. 
Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath. Here in Pullman, Washington, 20 up between two unbeaten teams. 4-0 for USC, 4-0 for Washington State. Two ties, four lead changes tonight. Forced it over to Williams, who made the grab. A competitive catch in traffic for a short game. That was an odd look. Four, there's three receivers and Williams over on the right side. And he's just standing there, looking over at the quarterback. Clearly going to get the football. Falk fakes to one side and finds his target for a short game. And that is Malik Dorton. Redshirt Jr. out of Los Angeles. High school All-American. He's played multiple positions in his career. Has to limp off the field. He's got that knee brace on his left knee as well. Teams have already huddled up here. And now Steven Strimling is trying to get the Washington State offense back out onto the field as they had huddled up. The buzz around this town was very apparent the last couple of days since we've been here. You could tell that this game had a different feel to it. Everybody's excited. Everybody recognized and realized the logo and the tradition-rich program that USC is and the top five ranking that they have as they come into Pullman, Washington. So there was a lot of hope that this game would live up to the billing, and it's been everything and some so far here in Pullman. It's coming. USC showing pressure. They'll bring it. Quick toss. Tay Martin ripped out of bounds by Langley. Marvell Tell told where he was coming a little too soon. He's creeping up at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the veteran quarterback, Luke Falk. See where the pressure was coming from and get the ball out to the opposite side quickly. As a defender, how tough is it when you're trying to time up a blitz against a veteran QB? It's, it's a cat and mouse game, man. You're always wanting to the skies, wait, 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 not show it. But every now and again, a savvy quarterback, he'll make you show your hand, which we just saw on the last play. It'll be about a 52-yard field goal from here if they can't convert. And Martin with the drop, incomplete. Langley in on the coverage to force fourth down. Will Mike Leach keep the offense out there, though? Well, I told you earlier from the 40 on fourth and five, he was go for it. That's who Mike Leach is. I'll be stunned if on fourth and three from the 35, the Pirate isn't gambling. Four-man rush. Falk has sweet for the first down. Inside the 25. Cool, calm, collected. Luke Falk in the pocket. Great poise on a huge fourth and three. He finds his slot on a quick out. And Kyle Sweet picks up a huge Washington State first down. And Luke Falk over 300 yards passing for the fourth time in five games. Shovels it to Mora. And Washington State takes the lead.
Luke Falk with that touchdown pass has tied him with Marcus Mariota for second all-time in Pac-12 history. 105 touchdown passes. Only USC's Matt Barkley remains ahead of Luke Falk as his offense has put the Cougars in front. Jamal Morrow from California giving Washington State the lead. Continuing our Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. 27-20, Wazoo on top of USC. And the Trojans will start this drive from the 25. Let's take a look at this play. It's a shovel, a staple of a Mike Leach offense. Check out these four offensive linemen do an excellent job opening up the hole for the running back, Jamal Morrow. It's just like a draw, no different. This is a, it's going to go down as a pass, but this is a draw play. Excellent blocking. You see the hole open wide up. Nothing but green grass out in front for the running back, Jamal Morrow. I know that play so well, but that's been a lot of time trying to offend it. And I can tell you, as you get tired in the fourth quarter, and you're rushing, 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 they throw a shovel. Very tough to defend, as we saw from the USC defense. Donald. Donald taken off, and a good run for a first down. Good one tonight, Brewing and Pullman. We've got more coming up for you tomorrow across our ESPN networks. Leading you to Blacksburg tomorrow night with Virginia Tech and Clemson on ABC. Quick throw, and it's complete to Lewis. Out across the 40-yard line. There is our college football look ahead brought to you by Xfinity X1. Ole Miss, Alabama. Ole Miss has given Alabama, Alabama some problems over the course of the last few years. They've beaten them twice. But it's a different Ole Miss team and really good Alabama team right now. Shea Patterson's a guy who can make some plays. And that type of quarterback that's given Alabama problems. But you're right. And I thought Alabama made a statement last week as they went to Vanderbilt and blew the doors out. Jones fighting for yardage. The line to gain was the 46. We've shown the fourth quarter numbers. We've shown how good this SC team has been in the fourth quarter and in overtime. But this guy, number 14, the it factor. Moments like this, time in the game like this, this is where traditionally this 13-game winning streak, this is where we've seen the best out of Sam Darnold. This is his 15th career start. Only 107 passing yards tonight. His previous career low was last season in that win against Notre Dame. Rifles it. Lewis in the Wazoo territory at the 40-yard line. Quick game. Ball's coming out fast. The rush can't get there. Donald doesn't have to worry about being uncomfortable because he knows it's a timing route. I'm getting that ball out before they can get to me. I like what T. Martin's going with to try to get his quarterback into a groove. Martin is the fifth year staff member at USC, 39 years of age, a Lane Kiffin holdover, was promoted to offensive coordinator after Helton was named the head coach in late 2015, former Tennessee quarterback who won a national title after Peyton Manning went to the NFL. Make it starting to rain a little bit out there, Adam. 
USC practiced with wet balls over the course of the week this week to prepare for just such an occasion. Garner looking for Lewis. Incomplete. Good coverage by Pippins. Felt like Joseph Lewis, the true freshman, speedster out of L.A. I thought he had a step on him, Adam. I thought if that ball was put over the outside shoulder, see that stone behind him a little yeah. bit? Or if, you would, or if Lewis could have turned the other direction, I thought he had a step. There was a big opportunity for Sam Donald in the USC offense. Movement up front with the noise coming in. Full start, 73 offense, five-yard penalty, remains full down. True freshman, Austin Jackson. But this is what the movement pre-snap creates, confusion, especially as we continue to talk about this USC young, inexperienced offensive line. Somebody give a move call, you see a move, and the slight movement of the left tackle, Austin Jackson. Washington State will use a timeout before third and long. Huge play coming up. Seven to play. Seven point game. Considering Sam Darnold is considered by most as the top quarterback in all college football. And now it's six and a half to go. Clay Helton is going to roll the dice on fourth and 13. Darnold moving and it is caught what a catch by Tyler Vaughn's for a first down this is what this guy does Sam Darnold game on the line 14 13 Frankie Louvu gets the pressure on him no problem nowhere to step up nowhere to go hit as he throws and a great play over the middle by Tyler Vaughn's to keep this drive alive It is caught! Shot of the goal line by Vaughns. Back-to-back huge plays for a total of 41 yards to Tyler Vaughns. First and goal. I can't tell you how much I respect as poorly as he's played this evening. For him to put together those two passes, huge. Nothing there, though, for Jones. It's Mata'afa. That's a man that lives on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Hercules, quickest first step in all of college football. Easy tackle for loss for Hercules Mataafa. Darnold keeps, and Darnold scores! It's a one-point game. When the moment is at its biggest, it seems like Sam Darnold is at his best. That's really all you can ask for from the quarterback, right? I mean, especially how poorly he's played. He showed the numbers. Having a career-low night as a starting quarterback. Backs against the wall. He goes 5-6 on that drive for 64 yards and a huge 4-13 to keep that drive away. McGrath ties it at 27. Clay Helton told us nobody's cooler in the tight spots than Sam Darnold. The game-time TD drive in the Rose Bowl, marching him down the field against Texas to tie the game. And here, with five to play, Darnold caps it off on his own. 27 up.
after the Cougars' last drive, Mike Leach huddled his entire offense. He said, I spent the first half calming you down. Look at you now. You need to understand how good you are. Now go put it to him. Get me another touchdown. Let's see if they can deliver at him. How about that message from the veteran head coach? 56 years of age, 16th season overall. Tie game after Sam Darnold marches the Trojans down the field. They got to go a quick game, but the fourth and 13 hit as he throws. Outstanding catch by Tyler Vons. And then finally, Sam Darnold's able to stretch the field. His first pass of 20 plus yards down the field at a the perfect time. He hasn't been great for the majority of the evening, but he was great when he had to be on that last drive. And that's the book on Sam Darnold. If the team needs a play in a big moment, he's always clutch. Two timeouts, five minutes to go. Mora trying to cut back, breaks a tackle. He just shed Josh Fatu and has the first down to the 35. Defensively, you got to wrap up. They give Mora a lot of credit for keeping his legs going and running through the arm tackles, but that should be a tackle. Fatu is unable to bring more to the ground. Clark trying to move around in the pocket, and the time clock runs out with Rasheem Green closing it. Second down. But Green has taken his second half over and has just really done an outstanding job working inside both in the run game as well as rushing the quarterback. Five sacks for Southern California tonight. The top 30 in the country entering tonight. Sweet. They'll spot him at the 38-yard line. Monday Night Football coming up with Week 4. Redskins at Arrowhead to take on Kareem Hunt. Fantasy exploder on your team. The Kansas City Chiefs are 3-0. Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's, starts it up at 6 Eastern on ESPN, 8.15 Eastern for Monday Night Football, also in Espanol on ESPN 2. Got to watch the running back out of the backfield in these situations. Third and four. Go, give to Moore for the first down. And Moore! Jamal Moore inside the 25! yards. Well, if I need to run the football, I'll tell you where I'm going. Behind the continent. Watch the big offensive lineman do an excellent job on the double team. Opens up a huge hole. Andre Dillard with a key block. Cody O'Connell opening the hole. Tavares Martin on the outside. Huge run for Jamal Morrow and the Cougars. Now it's Wicks. Dusty, that was the 77th play run by Washington State. I imagine it has to be having an impact on this USC defense and, right now. And we've talked about the physical football games that USC has played coming into tonight. And as you mentioned, those plays, those body blows, those body blows. And one thing about USC, they don't rotate a lot of guys. They play their starters, and if they have to play a lot of plays, so be it. But clearly you can tell a little bit of fatigue setting in here as we get closer and closer to the end of the fourth quarter. Clark, still looking. Clark, chased by Rector, who got him at the feet. But Luke Falk maneuvering and rumbling for seven yards. Clock continues to move, third down and short. Well, Luke Falk, that's the second time this evening. It's a nice job by the offensive line. And Luke Falk finds a crease in the rush lanes. It's a nice pickup, though he's a little gimpy as he gets up at him. And USC calling a timeout and Falk a little bit shaken up after that play. Don't go anywhere. Third down and two coming up. We're back in a moment. And USC gets the stop. Rasheem Green 
This may force USC to use that final timeout. USC uses that last timeout. And Clancy Pendergast defense comes up with the stop they need, but boy, Rasheem Green is down on the deck now. You know, he had a high ankle sprain in the Texas game. He had to leave that game early. Now, he played last week against Cal, but you kind of wonder, is something, is something from that injury lingering? Is it something new? Regardless, Rasheem Green has been instrumental in this second half and the interior of that USC defensive line. Like we mentioned, SportsCenter is coming up. Neil Everett had a piece on SportsCenter from Ryan McGee the other night. Cougar, gold, sharp, white cheddar cheese. I know he's a fan of it. He's got SportsCenter with Linda Cohn coming up. We'll break down this game, what happened in Miami Duke. Does somebody want to win the American League East? We'll figure it out hopefully in the next day or so. And now Rasheem Green. Has to be taken to the sideline. Washington State wanted to run the football on third down and short. Likely to force USC to use that final timeout. Now it's going to be up to Eric Powell from about 32 yards to try to give Washington State the lead. And Sam Darnold's going to have to go through the two-minute drill again with zero timeouts. Big kick. Is three for three tonight. Eric Powell, the son of Mark and Tina, goalkeeper and volleyball player at the University of San Francisco. The left footer with a huge kick. And now a minute 40 remains. No timeouts, USC. And Sam Darnold wouldn't want it any other way, Adam. I mean, this is this is what he thrives in. This is what he lives for. We said in the earlier, we talked about his, what's this guy all about? What are his attributes? The number one thing I said, he's got the it factor. Great time for him to show that to all of America right here for the chance to take his team down and tie or win this football game. He's already shown it over the course of his young career. Just his 15th career start tonight. Clay Helton told us that the first time Sam started a game, it was last year, one year and one weekend ago, on the road, on a Friday night at Utah. He had some struggles that night, but Clay Helton said, I looked into Sam's eyes, and I knew that he was ready for the moment. And he's been ready ever since. And that relationship has grown deeper and stronger between coach and QB. We'll see it on display in a moment. 1.40 to go. We'll start at the 25. It hasn't been his best night, but the last series might have been his best drive. 5 of 6, 64 yards, capped it off with a touchdown run. And they started that last series a lot of quick game. Ball coming out quick. Very reminiscent of the opening drive. Let's see if T. Martin goes back to that and allows Sam Darnold to have some success to get this drive started. And Darnold launches it away with Daniel Aquale bringing the heat. Aquale's been outstanding this evening. The only 300-pound defensive lineman in the two deep. Working his hands. Constantly relentless to the quarterback. Nice pressure to start the drive. Blitz. Clean to Darnold. Who lost the football? It's recovered by the Cougars.
Moore recovered it. Jahad Woods with the hit. The biggest plays of those two players' careers. The Jahad Woods, he's filling in. They talked about his speed and how much he's able to do and create havoc. Watch him on the blitz, just comes clean. The offensive line lets him loose. He doesn't just get to Sam Darnold, but he gets the ball out and he gets the Cougars, the football, ready to ice this game here in Pullman. A couple more knees will do it for Luke Falk, Jahad Woods, Mike Leach, and Washington State. When the athletic director, Bill Moose, hired Mike Leach, he wrote a letter to the Washington State fans explaining what he did to get Mike Leach. He traveled 2,000 miles to Key West <laughs> to find Mike Leach at his home and convince him to take over a program that Bill Moose, the AD himself, described as potentially the worst program in college football. But he felt that Mike Leach was the guy to turn all of it around. And tonight, on one September night, Pullman, Washington is the center of the college football universe with the upset that Washington State was hoping for. It's going to be lit on the Palouse tonight. They're not going to keep them off the field. Washington State upsets USC. Dusty Dvorak and Molly McGrath, Adam Amin sings so long from Pullman.